Dirty friends, today we are doing a challenge with the Daniel Smith Watercolor Essential Set. That is six colors, three cools, three warms, sent to me by the fantastic Kabocha. Now, can we actually mix what we need from just six colors? We'll keep watching and find out. <laughs> Today we are taking a look at the Daniel Smith watercolor essential set. You guys might remember this set from a mini watercolor palette tutorial that I did on this channel. And this set was sent to me by the wonderful, wonderful Kabocha as a birthday present. And some of you watching this might be thinking, well, I've sent you some watercolors back. Why aren't we going over those? And I apologize totally need to and I totally will Heidi I have not forgotten I have not forgotten the other watercolor samples you that Kabocha has sent me um, I'm just slow <laughs> and working my way through it and there seemed to be a lot of interest in this set and I thought you guys might enjoy this now this isn't really a review this is more of a challenge because the watercolor essentials set has all the colors you theoretically need to mix any color you're trying to get it's got the cool yellow in hands of yellow light the warm yellow in New Gamboge, the cool red in Quinacridone Rose, the warm red in Pyrrole Scarlet, the cool blue in Thalo Blue, and the warm blue in French Ultramarine. So theoretically I should be able to mix any color. Um, however, I am a comic artist who is heavily reliant on um, pre-mixed uh, convenience colors. I'm very, very spoiled. So this is going to be really a challenge for me. So the back of the box reads, Watercolor Essential Set. These six colors reveal themselves as excellent representatives of their color families. This set multiplies possible shade combinations and allows a vast array of color mixes. And in the set itself, you get six super duper cute teeny tubes. They're like what? The five millimeter tubes? Yeah. Five mil, yeah, milliliters hoops, sorry. So, so, so cute, perfect for travel. And in my travel watercolor palette video, I converted a little um, pill case from Target into a mini watercolor set. And as you guys can see, there is actually room for lots more color if I so chose. So I could put a black in, I could put some browns in, um, and I'd also put in a little Sakura Koi travel water brush from my Sakura Koi set. So um, this is a set I've taken with me on trips to Louisiana I've traveled with. So my colors in here are a little bit dirty and I would like to work from this, but I do need to clean them out first. So that's actually one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm just going to activate them and then use a brush. So I need a little bit of water. Actually, I should probably use a synthetic. What are you? You're a synthetic, good. To just kind of scrub that surface color out. I just want to avoid any sort of color pollution and wipe that off. Also give me a good idea of whether or not I need to refill. This red has a lot of blue in it. So like I said, this isn't really so much a test of these watercolors as it is a demonstration and also a challenge to see how well I can get along or how much I struggle with, um, you know, your basic set of six. Fortunately, I don't talk too big a game. I don't brag too much about my ability to work with a limited palette, um, but it is gonna be a bit of a, <laughs> of a demonstration and a learning process and hopefully I can inspire some of you hopefully I can teach some of you hopefully we can learn together so I have an illustration that I've already inked with a Sailor Midsole Ida brush pin and that is a waterproof brush pin if you can't find those I highly highly recommend the Sakura of America Pigma um, FB BBMB brush pins you can find those almost anywhere um, if even if you live in a small podunk place like where I'm from you can find them at your local Michaels and this was inked on Bockingford watercolor paper and I do believe this is a cellulose based watercolor paper this is made by st. Cuthbert's mill and I'm just going to use a white stroke to go ahead and erase all that graphite and if you guys are interested in learning how to watercolor yourselves, you can take my free watercolor course over at natosoup.blogspot.com under the watercolor basic section. So I was smarty for the party and I went ahead and swatched these in another video. And I'm gonna keep this handy as color reference because 
you know, <laughs> I like to know what I'm dealing with. I'm sure you guys like to know what you're dealing with. And one of my essentials is an uh, eyedropper pipette and some watercolor, or not watercolor, um, some uh, fur, 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 sorry, brain fart, some Vivo paper towels. And I like these because they're strong. You can actually reuse them. You can wash them out. Um, they also don't have a whole lot of a texture going on compared to other watercolors. And they don't have, sur you can get them without surface printing. So these are ideal, in my opinion, for watercolors. Of course, I don't see any kickback from Viva. Kleenex does not have me in their pocket. I'm also going to keep a small fluid watercolor pad handy for swatching colors. And the very, very, very first thing I want to do is I want to apply a wash and I want um, really bright colors. So first thing I want is I want to grab that Hansa yellow light and I may need to refill this because there's not a whole lot in here and I apparently used the heck out of it last time I was traveling. So we're going to start with that. I'm going to use a quill. We're going to pretty much do a wash with that. I'm gonna avoid her face. And as you guys can see with the Bockingford, it's already kipping up. Now this is 140 pound paper and theoretically 140 pound paper is not supposed to buckle, but it does. It's a fact of sad life. Um, especially if you apply a wash to it all over the place. But this is intentional. This is kind of hearkening back to another video I did. Um, I did a commission for my friend Kabocha, the one who sent me these beautiful watercolors. And uh, I used the same paper for it because I do like the paper. It is a nice paper for what it is. Um, but uh, I had the same, I opted to do the background first and let that dry and then I clipped it down with bulldog clips and I really liked how that handled. So next we're gonna grab that phthalo blue. Ooh, it's a lot of phthalo blue. <laughs> um, and I want to, to hold it down, but I don't, if you hold it down, your finger grease can affect it. And uh, even though I literally just washed my hands because I was cleaning out palettes, it's still consideration. So I'm going to hand over hand here real cool and I'm going to bring introduce some phthalo blue into the background and I wanted something that was very diffused that was light that was bright that sort of implied sunlight hitting a grassy or a, a, a wooded area so but I don't want to have to paint all that. So I'm going to let the paper be my friend and blend it for me. Now, while this dries, I need something to hold it down because it's going to buckle and bend and be a pain. So what I'm actually going to do, and I've never tried this before, so this could go any number of ways. We're going to take a little bit of washi tape we're going to fold it over. This is a low tack washi tape. It's not like Scotch brand washi tape, which is like weird. It's not like washi tape at all. Um, we're going to do the double over fold. We've already got some bleeding onto the next page based because of all this kipping. And we're just going to lightly push it down onto the previous page using clean fingers. And hopefully that will just hold it in place long enough for us to be able to for it to dry and when we're finished with the background we're going to clip it down with a bulldog clip but we're not really finished with the background so something else I want to do is I want to use a thirsty brush and I'm going to dab up some of this excess paint because I want to add I want to tighten it and I also want to add some more so we're going to go back to that big old quill. We're going to loosely dab some, going for kind of a mottled effect. Use that quill after we've dried it off a little bit. And then we want to grab a little bit of that phthalo blue, but we're going to, we're going to water it down on the side. 
dab that in there. So we don't have a green, we're mixing our own greens. So we get a nice, almost a hunter's green um, with the Hansi yellow and the phthalo blue. So we're mixing cool into cool and that's how you get really vivid, bright tones instead of um, sort of muted, muddy tones as you mix cools with cools and warms with warms and sometimes we don't have that as an option. a little bit of our watery green just to hopefully and her arm is going to be super green so <laughs> sop up some of that extra grab a paper towel and I should have put one under to protect the prior page. I hate wasting paper like this, but sometimes it happens. We're going to let this dry and then we're going to continue working the background, trying to get like that nice poppy modeled spring day effect. All right. So this has had a chance to dry a little bit and you guys know I can't help myself. So I'm going to grab some of that hands of yellow go ahead and mix it over here in one of the other wells and start working it wet into wet wow that is a vibrant yellow holy smokes i mean i've used hands of yellows before but i'm not i don't have a lot of daniel smith i have a few but not um a substantial collection like some of my friends do and gee whiz that's like almost almost irid not iridescent almost fluorescent that is a bright yellow do you know how we feel about that we'll just have to deal and then i'm also going to use that green like i said trying to get bright spring day without actually painting a bright spring day. Sometimes I'm good at this, sometimes I am not. That's okay, it's why we practice, that's why we learn, it's why we do things, so we can get better. And I am still fairly young compared to many, many, many other watercolorists, so I have lots of time you have lots of time. There's no reason to get discouraged or overly fed up with yourself. As long as you're trying and you're putting in the time every day, you will improve. It might take decades. It might take forever to improve. I'm a slow, I'm a slow uh, person to, to improve and change and grow. And that's frustrating for me, but it has inspired so many of my videos and talks with you guys. Adding more yellow to the top where the sun would be more apparent. So we've got that modeled color down. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. It doesn't necessarily look like what we talked about, but you know what? That's okay. We can let this dry. We can do another layer. I want to move that hair so that it doesn't dry weird. Now I want to move that chunk of hands of yellow. There we go. All right. So we'll let this dry. I'm just going to keep on building up color, playing with contrast. All right, guys. So this has had a chance to dry. I'm going to push it down so it will stick a little bit better. And I'm going to, I like how it looks. I want um, a little more color play than I'm getting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and mix that green up. And that was again, hands of yellow and phthalo blue. And it doesn't have to be the exact same green. We're not doing color matching here. In fact, I might even want it a little, little greener. So we're gonna add a little more of the phthalo. And we'll go ahead and get started with that. And I think I'm just going to add sort of 
like splotches to the background and some of them I'm gonna blend out and some of them I'm going to leave hard edge and I think that'll create some cheap visual interest without you know a lot of effort on our part. Really the biggest investment in this so far has just been time. couple up here and we're going to paint through the dragonfly wings since those are translucent in real life okay yeah. Yeah. go ahead and smooth some of those out but also leave some of them intact i'm also going to go in and soak up some of that pooled color and see the juxtaposition of hard and soft edges is gonna help give the implication of dappled light, which is exactly what I'm going for here. Blend some of those out as well and absorb some of this excess, move it around a little. And then we're gonna go in with that phthalo blue and that's gonna be really intense so we don't want it everywhere we just kind of want it sporadic here and there some low lights and I'm kind of talking you guys through what I'm thinking about always enjoy it when other artists walk me through their mental process. You don't have to agree with it to appreciate it. And we're gonna, such a nice color too. I'm gonna try to get some of that hard edge, soft edge juxtaposition without losing too much of that beautiful hands of yellow. And then up here, I think we're going to start introducing some of that hands of yellow and then doing the same technique we were doing down here. So there's gonna be some areas where it's really intense, add some down here as well. Really like how vivid some of these colors are. Very, very nice. Especially since I literally just finished the Cotman field test. So it's like, oh, so much better. All right, and then down here. And there. And then we're gonna do, love some of that blending already. Just, there we go. All right, so I am excited about that. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna mess with it more, but I'm gonna let it dry and I'm gonna see from there. But I'm happy with what I've got. I'll pull in with in for you guys so you can see it. Now with watercolor, um, watercolor will usually dry a little less intense, a little less um, saturated. So, you know, while it's beautiful right now and I could even, I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, I could do some more blue. I really love those pops of blue in there. So I wanna find a wet area because I want some of that diffused blending, which is just gorgeous, but also want some hard edge pops of blue. Such a nice color. Yes. Do I want to add some there? You know, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it and I might come in with that green, but I also might not. But anyway, I'm going to let this dry and then we'll decide together. So again, I really need to reiterate just how vibrant these colors are. This is pretty much dry. Um, it's still a little cool to the touch, but at this stage, a lot of the color vibrancy would be knocked down and these are still really bright colors. My camera isn't quite doing it uh, as much justice as I would like, but they are really, really nice colors. So I'm gonna add a little more green, not a whole lot and just sort of roughly sketch it in there. And for those of you who don't know, this is Kara, one of the two main characters from my watercolor webcomic, Seven Inch Kara. And it's about an adorable, tiny Lilliputian girl named Kara 
who decides to go out and meet humans. She'd been told her whole life that they were the stuff of fairy tales. It was to protect her from herself. She's a very impulsive kid. And her parents knew she would want to set out and meet some humans. And it's all about the friendship that she develops with a human girl named Naomi and Naomi's pet kitten, Pancake. And it's really cute. It's perfect for all ages. So whether or not you enjoy cute, sweet, heartfelt things or you've got a kid who likes comics, um, it is perfect for all ages. And you can check it out for free at 7inchcara.com or if you prefer Tumblr at 7inchcara.tumblr.com. And I can post a link in the description below. Help you guys find it a little easily, a little more easily. And we're going to grab a little more phthalo blue. And the whole comic is in watercolor. So if you love beautiful watercolor art, vibrant colors, then you will definitely love 7-inch Kara. And I've done a little bit of work on the comic on the channel. I have a few videos of my process, so if you're interested in that, I highly recommend you check that out as well. Oh, come on. let's see. And those of you who have watched my channel for a while know I could nitpick forever, change things, add things. So sometimes it's good to just kind of call it quits and go ahead and start making some actual, actual factual progress. But really, really am loving how vibrant these colors are. I paint a lot of botanical and floral illustrations as exercises, and I use Winsor & Newton a lot, and I just can't, I don't normally get, when they dry, they go down very brilliant, but when they dry, they, never quite as nice and I usually have to do several layers to really capture the color depth that I'm looking for. So it's just nice that you can get such intense color with these. Like I said, I recently did a field test of Cotman and I, this is just such a refreshing treat compared to that. So I'm gonna let that dry as well and hopefully, hopefully we are done with the background after that but I just love how much those colors pop. Alright guys I think that background looks pretty great. This is mostly dry still a bit damp so we're gonna remove our washi tape and we're gonna go ahead and grab a couple of bulldog clips and secure it down. <laughs> And they don't have to be as big as the ones I'm using. Little bitty binder clips that you probably already have will more than suffice. Of course, this is gonna make our paper dry a bit unevenly, so I'll grab one more. And that way we'll have some on each side. All right, so I need to go switch out my water and I'm going to begin mixing her skin tone. And okay, so I know I always use Scarlet Reds. I probably want some new Gamboge. That's gonna make an orange, little bit of cool uh, red, um, warm blue ought to neutralize it. And the ratio is pretty probably a lot of new gamboge. In fact, I'll pull out. You guys can see what I'm doing. So a lot of new gamboge. Then we're gonna grab some of our blue and it is harder to lighten than it is to darken. So we'll start with a little and slowly add some more. And then we'll grab a little bit of the scarlet, a little bit, probably goes a very, very long way. All right. And then we're gonna swatch it. It's actually, oh, that's almost right. It's a little, little too warm. So a little bit more of the French ultramarine. Okay. 
Okay, that's about right. So, we'll zoom in again. And given how much green has sort of leached into her skin, it might have been actually, I want to lift that up because it's going to affect her skin color. So, gotta be careful with that because it could have caused a divot in the paper or a score mark. Let's try that again. So that is the first time I have mixed a skin tone from a six color mixing set. And I wasn't sure if I'd be able to do it, but with a little bit of color theory, I think we were successful. With the six color mixing set, I think, I think I can figure out most colors um, and these are saturated enough that I think I can get the colors I want to because that was one of the problems I was having with the cotton set. There wasn't a black, there wasn't a purple, there wasn't even like a truly dark brown. So I couldn't, I just couldn't, and there wasn't an indigo. So there was like nowhere that I could mix to. Um, the, the best I was getting was like a really kind of weak uh, dark gray that came from mixing almost all of the dark colors together. So at least with the Daniel Smith colors, you can apply a little bit of color theory and get close to what you want. So I am going to let that skin tone dry. All right, so our skin tone dried a little bit lighter than I would like and a little yellower, but uh, that's, that's user that's user error, that's on me. So I'm gonna grab a little, a smidgen more, so, ugh, too much scarlet, dang it. And with that, the color was ruined. Actually, that's probably more the color I'm looking for. Anyway, I should have gone, should have gone for the gusto, but I was a coward and I didn't. So what I'm gonna do, and we'll see how this works out, is I'm going to, usually, if there was this much of a discrepancy between the two shades I mixed, I would either completely overpaint the character or I would clean out the pan and remix it, which when you're mixing from scratch like this can be pretty frustrating. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just try to do maybe some smooth blending and try to utilize both and we'll see. but I cannot imagine, I'm sure it could be done, but it would be so frustrating for me to mix and paint an entire page this way. It would take so long to do. I'm very reliant on my convenience colors because comic pages have many panels on them. There are multiple illustrations on one page and then every chapter is multiple pages. So you can get into the hundreds of single miniature illustrations and that's just not, using, using a set like this to paint a comic is just kind of not feasible. All right, so that looks, looks pretty good. We fixed the color tone and I think I'll be able to continue using that. I'm going to go ahead and start mixing her hair color. And that is also going to be a challenge because hair, Kara's hair has two real shades. It's got the reddish undertone and then it's got the very dark brown overtone. So first off, I guess we should mix a red and I'm going to, I'm going to pull out so you guys can see what I'm doing. We're going to use the quinacridone rose, which is very pink. See if I can, yeah, there we go. So I'm also gonna grab some of the Pyrrole Scarlet and get hopefully a red, maybe too red. Too easy to grab too much. These, these paints liquefy very quickly, which is good. We're gonna grab some warm blue ultramarine, French ultramarine really. Okay. And I feel like we're also going to need a yellow so that we can get that neutral. So I'm gonna grab the new gamboge. 
Aha! I think I got it, or at least close. So we're gonna swatch it. Ha! It's close to Venetian red, which is the premix color that I use as her hair base. Ha ha ha! Better than I thought I was, because I was like, oh, I'm going, to, I'm gonna botch all these colors. I'm gonna have to empty the pan multiple times. I know I shouldn't crow. I should be, I should be discreet, because there's still plenty of room for failure. That's still wet, yes. So I need to let that dry and then I'm gonna do the shading on the inside of her eyes and then I'm gonna do her hair. All right, so it's coming along pretty nice so far. I'm going to use a little bit of that phthalo blue and that way it'll kind of reflect the background to shade the tops of her eyes. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint that in. Come on, come on, don't run out. And then I'm going to clean my brush out very quickly and blend that out a bit because that's kind of an intense color. Could even use a paper towel to pick up the excess. We're going to do her hair. I'm really proud of myself for figuring out how to mix Venetian red light like the exact color that I need because I figured this was going to be an exercise in compromise or a lot of wasted paint because I don't I my watercolor background is not from the 12 or the 6 mixing color it's from the 12 colors and then I very quickly started adopting convenience colors because I do comics so there were just some colors that it was much easier for me to get a page done if I could use a shadow color from a tube. And I will still mix my own blends using that, but I use a lot of convenience colors as a base. So I don't necessarily know how I would go about mixing for a very specific color. One of the nice things about doing, say, floral studies over comic pages is that you can kind of noodle with the color. You can do layers, you can do blends, you can do glazes um, because you don't need to be consistent with the color. It's fine if you're interpretive. But there we go. With watercolor comics, it's especially with the way seven inch Kara is done, it's really important to be consistent. And I'm sure this is also true for people who do uh, children's book illustration, um, any sort of illustration where you're drawing the same characters over and over again and they need to be recognizable as the same colors. And while there might be some color variation here and there, you really can't drastically vary the hair too much. Right, so that has had a chance to dry and it's a really nice, vibrant color. I mean, um, one of the nice things is that with, with the Daniel Smith colors is that the color you're getting, um, even when it's wet, is very close to what it's going to be like when it's dry. So it makes predicting much easier. So that is definitely a huge plus. So I'm going to need to mix a shadow color. So I'm going to go ahead and go with, we're going to go, I'm actually going to pull out a little bit, but we're going to go with all cools. So we're going to use a uh, quinacridone rose, which is already a really nice, a really nice color. We're going to grab a little bit of that ultramarine violet. And that's going to give us, let's go ahead and swatch that because we almost... So it's actually a very nice, in the amount I mix, a very nice um, sort of a mauve color, almost almost fuchsia. It's another thing about nice paints is that you can mix some very true and vibrant colors because usually when I mix for purples with a red and a blue, it's just not that nice. All right, and then we're also going to grab a little bit of the two reds to use as a blush color. And we are gonna wanna work really thinly because these colors are so intense. Thin and blend, probably. Unfortunately for me, these bulldog clips 
are very much in the way and they're affecting my ability to paint, but that's not on the paints themselves, that's on me and the bulldog clips. So we got some blush and I need to dab up. And then also a very faint amount there. And just a little bit like sun kissed to the tops of the arms and along clavicle. Bring that up a little bit. And then we do here. There we go. And also on the tops of the eyelids, but just a little bit. So we're gonna blend that out almost immediately as well. Inside of the ears. All right, so not bad, not bad. Go ahead and clean both of those out. Dual wielding, of course. And then I'm going to remix her hair color. I'm just stirring it up in case any particles have settled to the bottom. And go ahead and color in her eyes. And I could go ahead and start on her outfit, but I actually haven't decided what color I want to go with with that. And I really love um, sort of the influence of light as it is. It's very pretty. I might just go with yellow and try to leave that obvious. So I'm going to start with a base color for the dragonfly. And I really want him to go from blue to green. So we're going to go with ultramarine and then we're gonna mix in that new gamboge. And that's gonna help, um, you'll see in a second. Let's go ahead and paint in his eyes. And ultramarine, French ultramarine is a beautiful color. And we're painting through the wings because they are translucent wings. So we're gonna grab some of that new gamboge. Hopefully, well, I'd hope that would work better, but. hoping I could mix a really nice green, but instead we have kind of an olive green color, which is fine. All right, now to let that dry. All right, so unfortunately that blue to yellow green transition wasn't as intense as I'd hoped. Now the reason I went with the warmer colors rather than the cooler colors, which would have given me a better green, obviously, is um, I wanted the dragonfly to sort of pop out from the background. Now, my theory is uh, New Gamboge is very close to orange and Ultramarine is a very purple blue. So, I mean, you know, you've got two complements that you're basically mixing together. So that's why we get mud. Well, and even then it's not even ugly mud. It's just not great. We get mud instead of green. So we're gonna try another watercolor technique of just layering the color on top, glazing it, and then blending that out. Because I do, even if it's olive green instead of a beautiful iridescent green that most uh, dragonflies have, um, I do still want to get that color transition. And then we'll take some more ultramarine blue. This is probably gonna be how I'm gonna get my black because it's already, let me see if I can get in there, a dark gray. 
rather than um, a green. That's just gonna have to do. And we're gonna add another layer to the skin. So I remix that skin tone in the well just to get the pigments all in solution. She's looking very sun kissed right now, which isn't really a problem. People do get sunburned, even Lilliputians would, I'm sure. They might even get it worse. And then I'm gonna blend out on the shoulder. And then I'm gonna let that dry. All right, guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply that shadow color. And I wanted to show you something interesting. As you can see, it separates out. So you've still got your the, the color we think we're getting. And then it separates out to the ultramarine blue. And I've noticed that some of the blue in her hair also separated out as it dried. And if you can't see that on camera, I'm going to have photos for the blog. So you can check that out at natosoup.blogspot.com. And you'll be able to find this in the watercolor basics and uh, you can also find my free watercolor course over there and that is designed to get you painting beautiful watercolor illustrations or watercolor comics whichever you prefer to learn how to do so if you've always wanted to learn how to watercolor I really recommend that you check out my tutorials over there and if you like them, it would be a huge favor if you shared them with a couple of friends and helped spread the word. All right, so I need to let that layer dry. I do want something here on the wings. Um, maybe a very light gray. Now let's see what we can come up with. So let's grab a little bit of the ultramarine and we'll actually we're actually since we're trying to create a um a muddy or a neutral sort of gray color we're gonna grab some of the pyro scarlet let's see what we get with that all right that's kind of a muted purple so that's good we're on the right track and then maybe a little bit of the handsy yellow light and that'll neutralize it a little bit let's see Yep, that's about right. And we're not looking to obscure the background. We're just looking to make it clear that the dragonfly's wings are do exist. And then, so his body is almost black. We do want the eyes to be a little darker. So we're gonna grab some new gamboge and basically replicate what we did on the body. Then I'm just gonna grab a little bitty bit of the hands of yellow and do the first layer on her shirt with this. And that way, hopefully it'll be nice and transparent and we'll be able to see all those beautiful background colors that had blended in. So I'm also going to remix her hair and do another layer with that. And I'm also going to go ahead and do her freckles. And they're drying fairly light. So what I'm gonna end up doing is um, I'm going to allow these paints to evaporate a little bit overnight and then I'm gonna come back in. So I want to do her two little 
hair ties. They're actually just glass beads, but I want to um, give an impression of some of the other colors that are in the environment. So I'm going to grab a little bit of the phthalo blue and apply that first and let that dry. So you can see it there. I apologize for being off camera. All right, that has dried. So I'm gonna go in with another layer of the Hansa Yellow Light. And then I'm also going to go into her little hair bobbies and grab some of the color we mixed for her hair. Add that to it. And then we're gonna do another layer on the dragonfly's eyes. So we're gonna grab some of the phthalo blue and some of the ultramarine blue and mix them together. And gently dab that on. Now I want I'm gonna zoom in in a second, but I wanna show you guys that in some areas, the paint actually, so right here and right there, the paint starts to lift up even though it had a chance to dry. Now that can be, a, it, there are two ways, hmm, there are two possible causes to this problem. Uh, one, it's a problem with the paper. This is, I do believe um, Bockingford is uh, cellulose base not cotton rag so that is a problem that happens with cellulose based paper sometimes if you put too many layers on it can also be a problem with the paints lower quality paints will um sort of flake up flake up like that um these are daniel smith and daniel smith watercolors are typically they're very very well regarded um so i hesitate to assume in this instance that it's the paint I'm more likely to assume it's the paper. However, however, there could be a third cause. And I actually haven't looked outside to see, but if it's raining outside or if the humidity is very high, um, you can get that problem as well. All right. So this is where I'm going to leave you guys for tonight. Going to let some of that water evaporate out. I'll check in with you guys tomorrow and we will continue painting this. All right guys, so it is a new day. Just finished watching the solar eclipse. Got some photos, that's pretty cool. And of course it being a new day, we gotta get back to painting, right? So our colors have had a chance to sort of dry overnight. I'm going in now with Hansy Yellow again. Lazing lightly over the colors I applied yesterday and then gonna mix a little more thickly for her pants and give that a chance to dry. All right, so now that that's had a chance to dry, I'm going to go in with another layer. I ended up putting down a little more on the hair than I wanted. And there's also something really fresh. Um, I tend to overmix, I guess. Um, and there's something really fresh about just working with this limited palette. You get um, the color vibrancy just seems a little bit better. So I'm going to mix my skin tone and I want to swatch it since I don't know how evaporation may have affected the color. Okay. And then we're going to blend that out and then delicately that on the face and then blend that out a little bit as well and then I'm gonna let that dry and I'm pretty pleased with how this is coming along um, I still need to mix my darker brown but I have some ideas about how I want to approach that 
All right, that has had a chance to dry. So I'm going to mix back up that shadow color and we're gonna swatch it. A little darker there, nice. And we're just going to carefully reintegrate that color. Going to be a couple of areas where I blend it out a bit. There we go. And I want those eyes on the dragonfly darker. So I'm going to go into the phthalo blue. And give that a coat. I'm also going to mix up that wing color that we mixed last night with a little more water. Swatch it, all right. All right, everything's looking pretty good so far. I do want to, um, I need to go a little darker with the hands of yellow on her pants. So grab a little more of that. And I actually think I want to turn it into a very light green for shading. And that's just going to be here on the cast shadow overlap. So in a minute, I'm just gonna mix, hopefully, the tiniest amount of phthalo blue. We really, really don't want or need much. Yep, got it. We're just gonna go wet into wet, and if we need to tighten that up later, we will. And now we need to start mixing a dark brown for her hair. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna grab some, I don't wanna take all of it, but I wanna grab some of that brown we mixed last night using an eyedropper and transfer it into a second well. And only add a little bit of water and I will pull out since we're mixing color. And then, so we're gonna need to start bringing in blues and dark, more blues and dark reds. So we're gonna grab some phthalo blue. That'll help neutralize the red in there and make it, yeah, there we go. See, that makes it a dark brown. Might almost be the color we need. Of course, we need to swatch that. So I'm gonna grab a fresh sheet of watercolor paper. Mmm, no, that is a very, that's a nice blue. It's like a slate blue. It's a good shadow blue, but it's not. Let's try again. Mm, yeah, that is a beautiful color, but not brown enough. So we're going to need some orange, or rather some new gamboge, and probably some red. And I don't know that we necessarily want to go for a lizarin, uh yeah, no, I'm sorry, quinacridone rose, because it's very pink. Maybe that will make it browner? It's a shame, it was a beautiful color. Okay, so that's more olive. We definitely need some red in there. So I guess we will try with the quinacridone rose. And if that doesn't work, we'll do the parole scarlet. I'm referring to these by their specific color names since we are indeed dealing with a very specific color set. All right, so that's redder. Hmm, we need darker and browner. Let's grab some more phthalo blue. This is, I knew this color was gonna be a, a challenge. Then we're gonna grab some ultramarine blue. That's a warm blue. That's gonna probably make it muddy and green. Swatch it. Oh, I mean, it's a nice, I keep getting these nice colors, just not the colors I want. So we need some red and then probably some pyrrole scarlet. So the quinacridone rose first. 
then the Pyrrole Scarlet. There, that seems to brown it up a bit. Let's see if we can. Ah, still a really nice color, a very muted color, but not the color I want. Hmm. Now I could probably at this point pull up a color mixing chart and it might even be for the best. But, aha, ha, we got it. Or we got a similar brown to what we're looking for. And I'm gonna call that a success. We're gonna go with that. But boy, it took what? Like several mixes on top of a base mix that should have been a good base for that just to get where we were going with the hair. So I'm gonna zoom back in. We're gonna go ahead and paint in her hair. Or at least do the first layer, because we're probably gonna have to do two layers of this brown. But we're starting off on a good base. We've got a good starter brown. That's the correct color, so that's gonna help having these bulldog clips underneath my hand is not helping but we need to leave them there because this paper will lift and buckle and this is cheap insurance now i will disclose that there is no way we would be able to mix a white Traditional, old school, serious business watercolor contends that you should le use the white of the paper <clears throat> as your white. Now, you can do that with masking fluid, you can do that with frisket, you can do that by scraping with a razor. That said, most... <clears throat> Most of those artists are working much larger than we're working, and they certainly aren't painting comic pages. So, I don't really, <laughs> I don't really pay too much mind to that. Don't let it bother me. Because what's more important than doing things the traditional way is doing things in a way that get the job done, especially if you're, um, producing a large body of work or you're maybe a beginner or you have low like you can't afford to invest a lot of money in it don't spend a lot of time worrying about doing things the 100 percent proper way worry about doing them in the way that helps you actually do the thing Because honestly, none of those people who are going to give you a hard time about what you're doing, they're not going to help you out. They're not going to reach in. They're not going to loan you supplies. They're not going to like come over or invite you over to show you how to do it correctly. They're just going to give you a hard time and then move on with their lives because they, I don't know. They enjoy being right. They don't enjoy being kind, I guess, is the difference. So I really, and if they do offer, take them up on it for sure. Free art education, affordable art education, always, always a good thing. I wouldn't turn my nose up at it myself. But I'm just saying when they, when they reach in and point out all the things you're doing wrong and none of the things you're doing right, they're not really doing that to help you. They're doing that to make themselves feel better. So I don't. I don't stress out about the opinions of people who do stuff like that. All right, so I need to let that dry. The brown is turning out better than I thought it would, so I am happy about that. Okay, guys, so we're gonna go in and we're gonna do another layer on her hair. And we're getting close to finished. Which is nice. Um. Uh, I've been seeing a real resurgence of the good, not perfect 
line of thought and I I'm a he if you guys don't know I'm like a huge proponent of that I crank out a lot of no I'm sorry finish not perfect um I crank out a lot of stuff I have I have acquaintances who spend like weeks on a single piece um and it's beautiful and it looks amazing and it really really impresses people and I admire the heck out of that because I don't have the patience for that but you know then they're the same people who are like Becca you get so much done yeah, because I don't care if it's perfect. I just want to get it finished. To me, every piece I do, every test I do, every every paint, you know, every challenge I paint, it teaches me new skills and I learn something new. Even if it's just how to salvage bad, bad paints or in this instance, how to mix paints from a six color uh, limited selection. So I'm always eager, maybe too eager, to finish things up and move on to the next challenge and the next set of skills that I can learn. And I think that comes from the fact that um, I have a background as a comic artist. So, you know, with comic artists, you can't, you can't spend weeks on a single page. I mean, I guess you can, but you'll never finish your comic. And that certainly doesn't work for the pace that web comics are released at. So, if you're wondering if you would like to do more art, if you're kind of bummed that you don't do enough art, like maybe work on embracing the finish not perfect mentality. And that can be hard for me. It was never a challenge because I am just... <laughs> I just don't have that much focus for any one task to spend weeks on it, which is its own set of problems. Um, because after six months, if I don't start seeing results, I get really depressed and I want to abandon a project, which is not good either. Um, so for me, I've never, I've never had to come across with the, okay, this is good enough. I need to stop. I've always come with, from the, uh, it looks like you kind of one cheek sneaked it and you need to spend more time on it. All right, so I need to let her hair dry before I can do too much else to her. I'm gonna go clean out my water because, oh, actually, you know what? I have a friend who sent me some iridescent medium. Maybe I should use that instead. Tempting, tempting. But I've never used it before, and this is already kind of a test. And I've had so many bad results where I do multiple, <laughs> multiple experimentings in one piece. So I think I'll stick with what I know, like a chicken. And I will put a little bit of the FW pearlescent. And this is in white pearl. And I use the heck out of this. It's an acrylic. So I'm not going to be able to do too much to it after. But I'm going to put that on the dragonfly's wings. So I'm going to clean out my water and then we'll do that. All right, guys. So I'm going to take a little bit of that clean water. I don't want a full iridescence. I add that in. And when you're working with these sort of uh, acrylic inks, they're beautiful. I love working with them. However, they if you leave them in your brush, they'll ruin the brush because it's acrylic. So you do have to clean them out thoroughly afterwards. But I just love that you can do a very light wash of iridescence. And then if you want, you can tighten it up again with black ink. Or you can do another layer layer later on. I'm gonna do some iridescence on the dragonfly's eyes. And also what I really, really like about this is it mixes pretty well with um, your watercolor. So you can like add some watercolor to tone it and get all sorts of colors. Now I do also own the colored inks. Adding a little more concentrated white. Wanted to wet into wet blend. And then after this dries, I'm gonna clean out my brush. After that dries, I'm gonna go back in later and do a very concentrated layer, um, just sort of where the sunlight would be hitting it the strongest. All right, so the iridescence has had a chance to dry. 
So it's just a little iridescent, iridescent, which is kind of what we were going for. Going now to fill in the eyebrows. Tighten up the hair somewhat. Do a little bit of strategic iridescence. On the eyes, and of course on the wings. Go back into that eyebrow so it matches the hair. All right, I think that's about done. So the only thing I really have left is to grab some white gouache and add some highlights. And you really don't need much. Add a couple drops of water. So I need to let the wings finish drawing first. So I'll go ahead and mix this up. And start adding my highlights. All right, just about done. It would be helpful if I could locate a waterproof fine liner. Unfortunately, I have a cat on my lap and I believe it's across the room. So I'm just gonna have to pause and go grab it. All right, we're gonna finish this up by cleaning up some of those lines. And I'm just using the same pen I inked with to go over them. And I'm actually gonna Google dragonfly wings because they have a lot of little black veins in them and I wanna have reference. And I'm not gonna do all those because it would kind of, I feel like it would kind of detract from the look, but I am gonna do some. So I'm reestablishing some of those lines. I'll zoom in so you guys can see that better. start unclipping because those are massively in the way. All right, and I think I'm gonna call that finished because I have a wiggly, waggly cat on my lap and he's really getting on my nerves and he's making it very hard to work. So rather than fight the cat, I'm just going to end the video since we are just about done anyway. So I really enjoyed painting with these Daniel Smith watercolor essentials. It's a six color set. The colors included are Hansa Yellow Light, Pyrrole Scarlet New Gamboge, Thalo Blue, Quinacridone Rose, and French Ultramarine. The colors are very vibrant. They are very intense. You get some beautiful, I mean, my camera is really not doing the color intensity justice. It's a little more saturated than this. I mean, it's just beautiful. The colors, the green, the uh, yellow Hansa, just really, really nice. Um, I had an easier time mixing colors than I thought I would. Um, I don't know, I just really doubted my ability to mix colors because I'm very used to um, convenience colors in my collection. And uh, I thought that without that safety net, it would be taking me I would be spending, you know, hours just trying to get certain colors. And fortunately, that wasn't the case. I guess, you know, years of watercolor painting, I did learn something. And I would heartily recommend if you're just going to do standalone illustrations rather than comics, and you want to learn watercolor from sort of a, a very beginner, very from the basics approach, mixing your own colors is a great way to get a grassroots feel for color theory. And it's a heck of a lot cheaper than a palette full of convenience colors. Now, if you are a watercolor artist who is interested in watercolor for your comics, like I use for my comic, Seven Inch Kara, the six color mixing set, while beautiful and beautiful colors and well worth the money, is just not really a good fit for your needs. You're just, 
it's going to take you a really long time to mix everything unless you plan on doing very basic mixes, which, you know, could be done. Um, I think these are high quality watercolors. I would heartily recommend these to any student who's willing to make a slightly heftier investment. And I would wholeheartedly recommend these over uh, Cotman watercolors. I wish this, the quality six color sets were pushed more as student options. Um, because while there is a learning curve, that's an opportunity to learn. And that's what being a student is about. And it's better to make your mistakes um, when you're learning, make your color, your weird color mixes while you're learning. And some people might see it as like a waste of money, but what you're really doing is you're training yourself to work with artist quality watercolors and they do handle differently from student grade watercolors. And if it's something that you want to pursue, it might be worth making that investment in time and in money. And I think for these six colors, it's a $30 set, I believe, on Amazon, which I know seems super hefty to some of you guys, but a lot of y'all are thinking watercolor should be a dollar or two, a tube, a dollar, two, or a pan. And I have, I haven't decided if I'm gonna do a vlog about that or a post about it yet, but I, I have some very strong thoughts on uh, our misconceptions about what quality watercolors are. So I wanna thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I definitely need to thank Kabocha for sending me the Daniel Smith set as a present. And I wholeheartedly recommend you check out her website, shooting-stars.org. She is a phenomenal webcomic artist. She does the webcomic linked, which I'm sure many of you guys will enjoy, especially if you like comics. But she also does Photoshop and Clip Studio paint resources like free brushes and um, I guess they would be considered like ribbons or tapes. So if you enjoy digital art assets, if you're maybe like a scrapbooker or a stamper who is looking for some fun brushes and you, you know, you have some digital art savvy, that is a fantastic resource that I cannot recommend highly enough. So thank you guys one last time for watching. You can find more of my work in the description links below and make sure you check out my other videos in my watercolor playlist. So I hope you guys have a great day. Bye guys.